taper the around the ear, taper, yeah. taper out the back, and then just blend it into the top. Yeah. And then you want like a little bit of layers on top, not like super short, but like just like a trim. Yeah. And then we can like thin out the ends a little bit to give it more like a feathery look. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. First, I'm using a number six to just get rid of some of the bulk around the edges. And I use my comb to manipulate the hair into the direction I want it to go. And I also like using the back of my shears to pick up the uh, hair. Quick. So this uh, sideburn you got, do you want me to bring it to like a point or do you want me to just kind of like naturally like taper it a little bit? Blend up? Why don't we do the first suggestion, like the natural? Just the natural taper down? Yeah. And is this, uh, you want it shorter than this on the sideburn? A little bit, yes. Okay. Yes, All right. shorter. I just want to, whenever I'm cutting women's hair, I get this like anxiety <laughs> about cutting it too short, you know? Yeah. So I, no, I, you, you can't I'd cut rather it too just. Short. Yeah, but I'd rather just, you know, take it off like layer by layer. I definitely prefer using sheer over comb, but it is definitely a skill that requires a lot of practice. I used to not have nearly as much control as I do now, but one thing that you can try to practice and implement is see if you can just cut a centimeter of hair. If you can cut a centimeter of hair with sheer over comb, then you're headed in the right direction. You know, there's there's debulking, which you can do with your clippers, but then when it comes time to go and refine your masterpiece, you got to figure out how you want to do that. You can do it with clipper over comb and just take off a centimeter of hair at a time. And, you know, like, either either way, like, if you're going to get good at clipper over comb or shear over comb, um, you have to get good with your comb, you know, and... and and with the angles and, and tension, and you gotta be mindful of the direction of the hair stream. Right now I'm doing some, some point cutting, and I'm doing that because as you start to work into the longer areas of hair, there's more opportunity to add texture. And for this pixie cut, I want to give it some life, when you look at a hair follicle that's been cut by a pair of shears as opposed to clippers, the clippers are a lot more blunt and more prone to split ends. And it, it grows in a lot more naturally when you use shears. Now I'm just using a smaller guard than I was using before. So that's got to be either a four or a three. And I just scoop out and listen for that crunch. And if I'm crunching, then I'm, I'm in the right, you know? So now I'm switching guards and taking, it, taking the taper down a little bit more. You got to use your eyes, you know? But the more experience you get, the more that you begin to develop recipes for, for tapering whatever you want. In order. Is that a good length right there? Or yeah. do you want it a little bit shorter or you like where it's no, at? No, I like it. Cool, perfect. Now I'm going in there with my blending shear and I'm just hitting the ends to to soften things up and help help it transition. Going back in there with the number six and just going straight up using my comb to push the hair through the teeth. One thing that you can do to actually save yourself some time and cut hair quicker is if you keep your guard closed then the hair has to travel through less teeth before it gets cut. So if I know for a fact that I'm not going to take it too short with the guard that I have on and I'm just debulking, I'd actually prefer to get rid of bulk with my teeth closed. Um, I mean, if you're still an amateur, then I always recommend keeping your guard open. But after you start to, you know refine your recipes if you will for cutting hair you got to figure out ways to get it done faster and, and that's that's one way you can do it so right now i'm just looking at my canvas and and getting rid of some of the transition from the six into the rest of the hair but i'm taking my good old time on this haircut you know the the uh the fact that she has a 
off center mid part means that it's going to be different on both sides. It's not going to be perfectly symmetrical. So all the more reason to not rush this kind of a haircut. It's, it's something you want to take your time and, and, you know, you cut, you get rid of bulk, you comb it, you look at it, you see how it lays, and then you make adjustments and you talk with your client and you collaborate with your client on, on the, the look that they're going for. I always move the ear out of the way when I'm when I'm working within at least you know like four inches of the of that ear because I mean even when you're cutting hair above the ear there is a chance that that the bottom of your clipper is going to bump into your client's ear and that's just not comfortable you know you're it's not only your job to give a great haircut it's also to give a comfortable haircut you know you don't want someone that's heavy-handed or someone that's you know pulling your hair it's it's not it's not a good look you know so right now I'm, I'm just um using my comb to just kind of manipulate the hair and, and look at like the, the way that it naturally falls as I comb through the hair I'm looking for tension and that tension is, is because of the curl, but it's also because of the hair stream. And as I pull these subsections out, I'm mindful of where the hair is going to lay after I cut it. I'm grabbing some of these subsections at an angle to establish the direction that I want the texture to go. And when I grab the hair with my comb, it's because I identify an area that has a buildup of bulk, but I'm still, you know, going in the direction that I want the hair to lay. Some of these subsections I'm over directing and the reason I'm doing that is so that I can retain more weight when that hair falls back down again. It, it kind of gives the taper a little bit more of like a bubble to it, which is really good for a pixie cut. You can already see that, that result, being mindful of that ear and and um, if you look at the way I'm holding my shears, you know, I'm 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 blessed to have that that swivel because I'm able to get in some really tight spaces with my with my shears having that that swivel thumb. As you get more experience with your shears, you'll find different ways to hold them to have better ergonomics. As I'm you know refining this nape, I'm I'm looking for areas where there's weight buildup but I'm mixing a bunch of different techniques to get the result that I want. There's places where I'm doing a little bit of notching to add a little bit of texture in the longer areas, but if I need to get rid of bulk, then I'm just straight straight up cutting, cutting that subsection. The direction that you pull out these subsections is gonna to contribute to the direction that the hair lays. So if you angle your subsections towards um, the back of the hair, for example, that's where the texture is going to go. If you look up Sam Villa or Matt Beck on, on their YouTube channels, they, they explain a lot about subsections and over direction, so definitely check them out. Occasionally, I'll actually tell the client to hold their ear for me. If I'm planning on sticking in an area for a while, like right above the ear, and I want to taper that area, it just makes it a lot easier to have the client hold it, hold that for you. When you're shaping up right around the back of the ear and, and guiding it down towards the neck area, you just want to make sure that you, you keep it natural. You don't want to push back their natural hairline. And everyone's hairline around the, the nape is, is different, you know? And you just want to you know, stay, stay in, an, in a natural zone there. But it looks like right now I'm just using my blending shear to transition into the area that I just cut and soften it up a little bit, debulk it a little bit. I'm definitely a big fan of notching with my blending shear. And that actually adds even more texture um, but not quite as drastic as the texture would be if I was notching with just my regular shear. 
Now I'm just using my scissor to taper out the bottom even more. And I'm being mindful of how short I'm going because if I go too short at the very bottom, then it's going to start to show some skin and that's not what I want. I still want it to look natural. And especially when you're working on women's hair, you, if you're, you know, tapering out the neck, you're not going to give them an uh, actual neck taper, like down to the skin, like you would with a guy, unless unless that's what they're asking for. But nine times out of ten, you know, if a girl wants her nape to be tapered, she's not looking for that. Do you want it any shorter than that, or you like where it's at? Let me touch it a little bit. <laughs> Good, kind of like a feel for it. Go a little bit shorter. Just on the base of it? Yeah. And then do you want me to um like round it or square it with rounded corners or just naturally just blend it down? Mm. You could um rounding it would be like this, where squaring it would be Yeah. You could try squaring it. Okay. When a client asks to get the back of their hair squared they're not actually trying to get corners usually. They usually want the edges of it to be rounded because it looks a lot more natural. But every once in a great while, I will get a client that actually does want points in the back. So, you know, I, I, I like to ask. And you can use your own artistic opinion. You know, if, if they have a haircut that has a lot of corners as it is, then maybe it'll, it'll work out and, it'll, and it'll, it'll match the rest of the, the haircut. How's that like? I like Don't, it. Yeah. You like that? Yeah. I just kind of took my time and tried to get it the right length. Now let me uh, just add some chop, some chops to the top. Yeah. When I'm saturating the hair, I never get it so wet that there's actually water dripping off because when that hair starts to dry, it's going to curl up a little bit, and the more that you wet it, the the less that the hair falls the way that it would naturally. So I still like it to be, you know, I like it to be damp, but not soaking wet so that I can still see how the hair naturally lays to a degree. But when I'm working around the bangs, I'm very mindful and, you know, just taking off a half an inch at a time, comb it down, see where it lays to frame her face because I still, you know, want the bangs to be the longest part of the haircut and to give that haircut dimension it needs to have um, a little bit of, of contrast in the lengths but you don't want it to be so long that it looks like they need a haircut. I love doing some slide cutting with my blending shears because it gets rid of some of the um, bulk towards the ends makes it more feathery which helps with the separation and then I follow that up with doing some slide cutting with my regular shears to emphasize the separation even more and now I'm going in and touching the ends with some notching to give it more texture since I got rid of some of the length in the bangs, now I'm going and getting rid of some more length in the other parts of the haircut to maintain that same balance and, and contrast that I was looking for in the beginning of the haircut. As I'm connecting the, the top of the hair to the nape and the sides, there's a little bit of a disconnect there, so I, I like to do some notching to, to smooth some of that out. But I already finished the left side of the bangs, now I'm working on the right. And I just start off by taking about three quarters of an inch off. And now I'm working my way subsection by subsection towards the back. And I'm just doing 90 degree cutting, creating layers. And you know, as I get closer to the sides of the head, then instead of doing 90 degree, maybe I'll, I'll do 45 degree just to give you know, a little bit more of um, a smoother transition into the sides. I'm also doing some zero degree cutting around the bangs just so that I can clean it up.
because there is a little bit of a disconnect there. You know, because the, the bangs, um, they're going to lay on top of the sides in the front of the hair. It's not going to be like a, a smooth fade. You know, this isn't a men's haircut. So sometimes, you know, you do have a purposeful disconnect in the bangs. And, you know, you got to know how to cut that without taking it too short. Whenever you're doing zero degree cutting, you always want to start at the longest part of the haircut. If that's the back, then that's where you start. If that's the front, you start from the front and work your way back. Again, I'm doing some slide cutting with my blending shears to give it that feathery effect on the ends of the hair. And I like doing notching to give it a little bit more texture. I'm getting close to the end of this haircut, so I'm just hitting the ends, getting rid of any places that I think that there's a buildup of weight so that it lays the way that I want it to lay. Oh, I like that. I like how you got it nice and short at the base. Yeah, and I did a nice natural taper into the top. Mm -hmm. I like that you got rid of all this right here. Mm -hmm. Do you see anything you want me to adjust at all, or you like everything? Right here, so it's a little less bulky. Yeah. And then I'm, I think this side's, mm, you could do it on both sides. Just thin it just out a, a little bit. bit more. Maybe give it a little bit shorter right here, just so it's not like, okay. kind of sitting there. Yeah, right here on both sides? Yeah. Sure. But otherwise, good job. Thank you. <laughs> Put a lot of work into it. At the end of the day, there's so many different ways that you can cut someone's hair. So I think it's important as you go along, if you have options, then ask the client what they, what they want. You know, give them options. And they really do appreciate that. So I'm just going in and getting rid of some of the bulk that she was talking about with some, some point cutting. So the, the thing about point cutting is you can still get rid of weight. You know, it's not going to get rid of as much as if you were just blunt cutting it. But it's also going to add texture at the same time, which is what we're going for. We want a little bit of movement in the nape area and in the crown. The deeper that you notch into the hair, the more drastic the texture is going to be. The same way you approach cutting a, you know, apple with a knife. If you just push the knife down into the apple, it's, it's going to be a lot of work, but when you use the blade of that knife, it slices right through the apple. You want to have the same approach when you're using your shears. So as your blade closes, you want to just pull away slightly, and that helps the blade cut through the hair, especially when you're doing bigger subsections. Of course, if you're doing smaller subsections and you got some sharp shears, it shouldn't really be a problem, but, you know, it's just something to keep in mind. You like that better? I do. All right. And I didn't want to take it too short, because then it will start to, like, stick out and stuff. Mm-hmm. Thank you very take much. Take Mm-hmm. Cool. If you got anything out of this video, please like, subscribe, share, and comment what you want to see me do next. Until next time, peace.